What's up, you guys? Welcome back to the show. I'm glad you're here. Welcome back to another episode here at the kitchen table. Today we're talking about 360 raw photos. I did an episode a year or so ago, I'll link it up here wherever those things go, um, about taking a tripod out of 360 images. That was specifically for a user who was using CS6, so didn't have the modern tools. So today I thought we'd go through the entire raw process and show you my current workflow for taking those images from the camera as a raw photo all the way through the process to an output for something like 360, uh, Facebook 360, or for uh, virtual tours, or a VR headset, anything like that where you need a final rectilinear photo that's been corrected and things removed and all that good stuff. So anyway, that's what we're doing today. Welcome back to the show, here we go. Now before we get to the editing part, let's talk a little bit about shooting. Now no matter what, 360 camera you're using, there are gonna be a couple of components that you want to take into account. Now today, we're working with the Insta 360 ONE X2. You know that I was a very big fan of the ONE X, the original. This is just the newer version. I really like this camera. I've been super happy with the images out of it so far. But a couple of important things that I wanna point out as you are shooting because even though these capture 360 degrees, the direction that the camera faces does make a difference. And let me explain that. On the Insta360 ONE X, we have a front and a rear camera, just like any other 360 camera. Um, but what happens when we take those two spheres and they get stitched together and then opened up into that rectilinear format is that the front camera ends up being the center of that frame and the back camera, as that opens up, ends up getting split in half. Now, the reason this is done is because in a raw editing workflow, if we had the front and the back together like this, we would have the stitch lines at the edges and that would be much harder to edit. But by splitting straight down the middle of the back lens and opening the frame up that way, we have the stitch lines at about two thirds on either side of our frame. So if we need to touch those up at all, they're right in an area where we can do that with that rectilinear format. Let me just show you the difference here. So in this image, I was standing in front of the front facing lens. And if I turn the camera around, in this image, I'm in front of the back facing lens. You can see it's cut me in half I'm on the far edges of the frame. If I had to adjust myself, it would be very difficult. So that's why having that front facing lens facing either your subject or the most difficult part of your image to, to edit. In this case, I've got some really bright windows back here, but behind you is the kitchen and there's no windows in the kitchen. It's a very controlled light situation. So what I wanna do is make sure that my front facing camera is seeing all of these windows. Because that way, when I go in and do an HDR workflow where I've got multiple shots that I'm trying to blend together, I'm seeing the most, the biggest offender in that image in the middle of my rectilinear. And that way, it's just easier to see. I hope that, I hope that makes sense. So those are the couple of things that I wanted to talk about as far as shooting goes. The other thing is eye level is important for if you're doing a virtual tour or if you're doing tourist type stuff or like when we're out traveling and I wanna give the sense of place, having the sense of place be the sense of place from your eye line. In other words, it's not too close to the ground, it's not too high to where you're looking down on things. But if you were standing in that position, you want that to be the area that you would see with your eyes. So that's all the pointers I have for shooting with the camera. Let's jump into the computer now and talk about some of these files and how we work through the raw files, what my workflow is to get the best highest quality image out of your 360 raw photos. All right, so you've done your shoot and it's time to jump into the computer. Now there are a few nuances I want to point out right off the bat because if you screw this up, it can make your life a lot harder. So the first thing that I want to say is I'm looking at the photos here in Bridge on my laptop and if you were to open these, say in Camera Raw from here or your Lightroom and you open that image and start tweaking it, because this is a DNG file, it means that all the EXIF data, all of the metadata for this image is stored inside that digital negative. I love the DNG format. I convert all of my files from my Nikons to DNG. It's Adobe's proprietary digital negative format and they're committed to that format for the long term. So I try and convert everything to it anyway. I love that the Insta360 ONE and ONE X, I think, shoot 
in DNG already. But the nuance here is that if you open that up and change things, there is a very high probability that that overwrite in the metadata is going to make it impossible for you to unwrap this image into rectilinear in your software for your camera. So the first thing we wanna do before we do anything else is jump over to our Insta360 Studio in this case, and I want to grab the file that I want to work with, drag it into Insta360 Studio, and open that up. And you can see this is exactly what we would expect, a nice 360 image that we can scroll around. Now we don't need to really do anything in Insta360 Studio other than I always click the calibrate uh, button because that actually checks the seams and makes sure that your stitching is as good as it can be. It's a little superstitious. I don't think you have to do this, but it always makes me feel better, so I do it. And then the next step is, the final step here is just to click up here, start export. I like to call this underscore RL for rectilinear, so I know that next to my main file, next to my original file that is the stereospherical file, that we have the rectilinear file. I do want to export it again. I've already done it once, or five or six times, trying to get this recording right. All right, so I'm going to switch back to Finder here so you can see my original DNG, and then I've got one called RL, and we don't need that stuff. Okay. So we've got a rectilinear. Now basically what we've done, just so to catch you up, when this comes out of the camera, we have a front and a back lens, and those are individual photos that are put together into one DNG. But what you can see here is that spherical, uh, stereospherical where we have both the front and the back in one file. And what we've done now is unwrap that into this rectilinear format that we can now start working with. So I'm just gonna close these two files, go back to the one I just created and throw it into Photoshop. And here we are in Camera Raw because we took a stereospherical DNG file and we converted it to a rectilinear DNG file. It's still a digital negative. It's just been formatted differently so that we can work with it and so we can export it properly. So I'm just gonna do a quick run through here. I'm gonna pull the highlights, push the shadows, do the basic little weird stuff that you always have to do. Little clarity, a little vibrance. I'm not really working on this. <clears throat> I'm just trying to hurry so you don't have to watch me do this. So I'm just gonna click open object that's going to take that from camera raw into Photoshop. Obviously you could do this through Lightroom but you're gonna end up in Photoshop anyway so I just prefer to drag it into Photoshop, do it in Adobe camera raw, any sort of uh, raw editing that I need to do. And now I have this as a rectilinear file inside Photoshop. <clears throat> now as a caveat, if you were doing say a three stop bracket and you had three photos, you'd wanna do exactly the same thing. Take those three photos into Insta360 Studio or whatever you're using for your conversion. If you have a Theta camera or something like that, it'll obviously be a different program. But go through and do the rectilinear conversion. Make sure that you're outputting as a DNG. And if this were a, um, an HDR photo where I had three, three images, I would stack those in here. I do my luminosity masks or however you like to blend your images or, excuse me, in Lightroom, create a, an HDR rectilinear image out of those three images, however you process your HDR. That's not what this is about. So I'll just assume that you know how to do that and let's just land in Photoshop. So what we have here is our smart object layer. It's the only layer that's open right now. And what we're going to do is go up here to 3D click spherical panorama, new panorama layer from selected layers. And what this is going to do is it's actually going to turn that rectilinear image into a 360 image, just like the one that we saw in our Insta360 Studio, one that you can drag around and look at as if you were looking at it in a 3D program on Facebook or in a, uh, oh, what do you call that? A virtual tour software or in a virtual headset. Anyway, we can scroll around. What we're concerned about in this image is the tripod. So I wanna show you how to remove that, but non-destructively. So the first thing we need to know is that over here now in our 3D layer, we have a section inside that 3D layer called spherical map. And spherical map is where our original DNG, the original unwrapped uh, spherical or rectilinear uh, file lives. And you can see that this is the raw file. If I double click on it, I go right back into my raw editing and I can make tweaks here if I want to. But the important thing to know is, I'm just gonna cancel out of this. If you're going to make tweaks to your raw file, once you look at it in your sphere and, and you think you need changes, come in here, make the changes, save this file and close it. 
Now, unlike a standard smart object where if you save it, it'll update to the parent file, these don't work that way. So you need to update, close, go back to your 3D layer. And if you need to make more changes to that spherical map, you've got to reopen it again. That's really important. So the first thing that I want to do is actually reopen that spherical map. Here's why. Because if we add a new layer here, let's call this tripod removal. What we can do is save this. So I'm saving this spherical map and we're going to go ahead and close it. Go back to our 360 and then any changes that I make on a new layer here, I can merge down into that new layer I just created in the spherical map. So let me show you that in practice. So I'm gonna zoom in here and I only want to remove the, the tripod here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new layer. You can command option shift and N, that's the uh, quick key I use, or you can just click new layer over there in the layers palette. And I'm going to do also command shift option E or layer image, <laughs> image, apply image right here. And basically what apply image does is it takes everything from all the layers below and it combines them together into the layer that we're on. So basically if I zoom out here in layer one, you can see if I move this around that I have basically just got that frame copied to a new layer. And the reason I'm doing that is because depending on how much cloning you have to do, and I'm just gonna do a real quick selection here, shift delete to use the fill dialog for content aware and we'll see how that does we got pretty close let's zoom in here i'll grab my clone stamp tool just sample down here paint a little in there try and do an okay job all right and now we can't see the tripod anymore but we have this entire layer that we don't actually need so what we can do is we can actually hold down our option key and add a new layer mask to this grab our brush foreground color set to white. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna brush onto this layer map that's, or I'm sorry, didn't wanna do that. Onto this layer mask that is selected, I just wanna paint out my tripod, just like that. That's it. Now, if I hold down option and click on the layer mask, you can see all the stuff I've painted in white, that's what is actually showing through. So I'm gonna option click on that again to hide it. And then if I click on that layer mask, and choose apply layer mask. That's going to basically apply the layer mask to whatever was on that layer. And now you can see if I turn off the background layer that all we have on that layer is just this little bit of, of adjustment there, this little bit of painting that we've done over the tripod. Now, this is where the cool thing is. What I can do is I can merge this layer down and actually put it into the spherical map right from here. And you do that by shift command or shift control E. Um, and that actually, whoa, that's not what I wanted to do. I'm sorry, Command E, not Shift Command E. <laughs> Command E or Control E on a PC. And what that's going to do, if I go back and open that spherical map again, you'll see that on my tripod removal layer now, if I turn off the other layers down here at the bottom, you can see that that tripod removal layer that I made within the 3D object is now placed right on top of, just down there at the bottom on our spherical map. Awesome. Now let's say that I wanted to clone out something else. I would actually add another layer. So I'm just going to add another layer here. Let's call this outlet and I'm going to take out an outlet. So you want to make sure whatever layer you want your work to go onto needs to be selected. So I'm going to save this and then I'm going to close it. Like we talked about, got to save it, got to close it. All right. So now I'm back here in my 3d layer. Let's just go ahead and drag around. Let's find something else we want to remove. I know there's an outlet over here on the other side. Oh, I hate dragging around these things. Come on. Everything is backwards. Okay. Here's my outlet. So I'm just going to zoom in right here and let's just do it with a selection this time. So I'm just going to copy that, create a new layer, paste that onto the new layer. So if I hide the background, you can see that I'm just going to take my lasso tool here. Same thing, just a quick content aware fill. We can see that that's gone. Now, because I just have a small area here that I selected, I don't need to do my mask and all of that. All I need to do is go Command E again. That's going to take that layer, throw it into the spherical map. And if I open the spherical map again, there it is. You can see outlet removals on its own layer, tripod removals on its own layer. And down here at the bottom, we have our raw file that non-destructive, nothing's happened to that file. All we've done is little tiny edits. So again, save and close. And when that's done, all we need to do is go up here to 3D, spherical panorama, 
export panorama. You tell, you tell it where you want it to save it, what kind of format you want to save it to, in this case, JPEG, and I'm just going to call this rectilinear by NA, uh, NA <laughs> and click save. And that's gonna go ahead and save our work and we're done. So that JPEG can be used in Premiere Pro to do 360 stuff. It can be used in uh, virtual tour programs. It can be used for Facebook 360. It can be used for your goggles, VR goggles that is. And that's the workflow, start to finish. So take it from the camera, convert it to rectilinear, do your camera raw edits, and then start taking things out using that 3D layer, that panorama layer, and that spherical map. And you can make as many layers in that spherical map as you want. Remember each time, save it, close it, go back to your 3D layer, add a new layer, make your adjustments on that layer, then merge it back down. That's the workflow. It's not that complicated, but there are a lot of little nuances that you need to remember. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. I hope it wasn't too long. Thank you for sticking around if you've made it this far. <laughs> Like, subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff that helps the channel out. I'm new here and every little bit helps, as you know. And until next time, I will see you. Bye.